Welcome to the Jarek Report. On this episode, I chat with one of the top concert promoters in the world, and he lives right here in Philly. We met at the Met. Jeff, first of all, how beautiful is this place? It's amazing. I, you know, we've had a couple of shows since we've reopened, and uh, you f forget, I don't, yes, you forget after about 12, 14 months of not being here, and every time I walk in, or, and every time I walked in, or, always, is, it's always astonishing what a great venue is, and what a gem it is. And it's a gem. How old is it? Uh, opened in 1908. I was here for that. Yeah. <laughs> so was I. I was a little boy, <laughs> little Jeff, three years old. <laughs> uh, what is it like to be Jeff Gordon? Oh, wow. Um, I'm very blessed. Six kids, beautiful family. Um, started when I was 17 and uh, worked hard in order to be where I am today. And what were you doing at 17? I was a hairdresser. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes, I was a hairdresser. And why not that anymore? Um, I love doing it. I love the creativity of it. I just, listening to people's stories about their relationships and stuff was <laughs> a little much to take. And what is that about? Because I tell people that cut my hair everything. You also do that with, uh, Let's see this. Bartenders? Bar that's it. <laughs> Bartenders and hairdressers know everything about their clients. They're amazing therapists, and we all need that. I just, uh, you know, I just, I mean, I always loved music, so that, that was my passion and my direction, no matter what I was going to do. So um, that's really the answer. How did you get into the music then? Took a part-time job as an intern. and uh, Where was that? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And what was, was, that, was it a venue? No, it was Cellar Door Productions, which eventually became a roll-up, just like Electric Factory Concerts, into SFX, then Clear Channel, which is now Live Nation. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> What's your title? My wife often asks me that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the, your title? I'm a regional president. I recently just got uh, the promotion to oversee New York as well. So I do all of Jersey, New York City, Philadelphia region, Hershey, Scranton. And okay. I oversee all the venues and the bookings there. I also book a ton of shows and get involved in tours. And, and then at times I'm a caterer, I'm a parking attendant, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm your valet. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that too. <laughs> so I, that, no really, but you know, I've done every job in this business and I'm proud to do every job in this business and it really gives you good perspective and respect to all the people that really work hard doing this all the time. People always, when they think about the music business, the old quote was always sex, drugs and rock and roll. Is it the same today as it was back in the 60s, 70s, 80s? I wasn't around for those years, so, so I am. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. Well, it's still fun. Yeah. If, if, you're, if you're asking him, it's still fun, it's still fun. I think people are more responsible about all those things in general, um, but it's still fun. It's, it is fun. I mean, it's, it's a great job. It's a wonderful thing to have people smile and watch music. That two hours that people have to escape from whatever they have to deal with and see their favorite artist, it's an unspoken thing when you can look over at a fan of the same artist right. and you're singing along. It's just a such a great connection. Can you relax and enjoy a show? Yes, yeah. But you're constantly working. It seems like an exhaust, exhausting job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you can let it enjoy just a little bit. I, I enjoy it all the time. I enjoy it every day, honestly. It's, it's, it's very stressful. Public assembly is very stressful. Certainly a challenge during uh, these times. And But at the end of the day, it's throwing a huge party with an amazing musical guest act. And they're really, it's all about the artist. And uh, I'm very, 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 very lucky and blessed to be able to do what I do. Yeah. Everybody has to have a team around them for success. 100%. Tell me about yours. 
boy, they are, they're, they're really the all-stars. I'm just there to try and keep it together at times, but you know, Carrie and uh, definitely John Hampton and Stacy George and Steve Gaber and Donna Eichmeyer in New York. Um, there's so many people that support me and support our team, and it yeah. really is a team effort. Yeah. Um, between, we do about 600 shows a year in Philadelphia oh and about 2,000 in New York, so do the multiples. Without a team, I'm nothing, so I, I rely on them a lot. I try to lead them the best I can, and it's really about making sure that they feel good about, feeling good about what they're doing. You always had this calm demeanor. Is it always this way? No. No? Well, it, it is when I am dealing with people, when I'm dealing with myself sometimes, not so much. That's interesting, <laughs> yeah. Let's go through some of your, the highlights of your career. Uh, give, me, give me some of those. Made in America is one of my biggest highlights. Certainly the Central Park show with Clive Davis that we had in Central Park was amazing. Have you ever met him? No. Oh, no. that's awesome. Yeah, and certainly an icon for me. I'm a huge Aretha Franklin mm -hmm. fan, huge Whitney fan, so that was super exciting. Roots Picnic certainly is a big deal for all of us. Um, you know, stuff like the events. The events are huge. Yeah. And, and, and wait, 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 wait. Let's not forget. The Met. As Carol Merrill would do, and let's make a deal. <laughs> I'm the Met. Yeah. The Met. The Met. Yeah. But when you look down the parkway in Philadelphia and see Made in America, wow. It, it's, it's, it's special. It's special. And I, and I really remember being a lot of those folks' age and how exciting it was and excited to get my clothes and my sneakers ready and who, was I'm, who am I going yeah, with and yeah. then going there and seeing everybody and trying to act cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I love all of that. I, I, really, I really do. I love all of that. And that, that's really rite of passage um, for younger folks. I think Made in America has, has been a lot of that for younger, you know, yeah. some of the younger folks and even older folks uh, to be together and connecting. <laughs> Made in America sure is a, a wonderful addition to the Philadelphia experience. Uh, how did it happen? How did we get it? I, uh, it's either midway or after or during we were planning Watch the Throne. And at that point, Anheuser Bush and Steve Stout came to Jay with an opportunity to sponsor a festival. And I lobbied hard to have it here. Obviously, Jay is from Marcy Projects, Brooklyn. Right. But my thing was, this is, this is really where America's birthplace is. And the art museum represents, you know, al although a fictitious character, Rocky, mm -hmm. which is coming from the bottom up. And I think that's the story of uh, a lot of us, is work hard and you become the champion. So I think it made natural sense in 10 years Later, we're still doing it. So. Huge success. And Jay-Z is happy with the decision to start it in Philadelphia. We're, we're on year 10, so, yeah. 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 Um, has there ever been any, you've, I don't know a star that you haven't met in the music world. Can you think of anybody that you would like to meet that you haven't met? Nobody that's still alive or, or recently still alive. <laughs> No, I mean, if I could go back in time, I'd have loved to meet Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Um, big fan of Jimi Hendrix. Bob Marley, I never met. Um, artists that are, are not with us anymore, yes, but most artists that are with us, I've met. And um, very, very blessed to be able to have met them. Does anybody stand out, oh my gosh, I love being with them? Certainly Dave Grohl, Jay, Dave Matthews, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam, and the whole band from Pearl Jam, um, Reverend Run. Um, there's so many, but those are definitely standouts and very much influential and, and 
you know, contemporaries. So those are definitely standouts for me. Were you ever nervous to meet anybody? Uh, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Why? I grew up listening to Aerosmith. And I, and I would say also Run DMC. I was nervous together, although I met them separately, but it was strange when, you know, MIA won, um, they were together. And when I took the, all, it all in about, it was Run DMC. And that was one of my favorite acts growing up. It was very, very special. And I tell you, I just uh, said hi to LL Cool J in Central Park and still, and again, yes, I don't I'm nervous at this point, hopefully not, but it's butterflies. I mean, LL Cool J, you know? Yeah. What does celebs, you know, music celebrities want from you? I mean, you can't be too much in their f business. No, right? no, 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 no. That's not my, my job is to, um, help a little stay out of the stay out of the way a lot um they're artists you know they have the vision if i can help with that vision and enhance it and promote it which is now a promoter that's my job yeah and my job is to be present and know what their or at least try to know what their vision is and really deliver on that yeah when somebody's sitting in these seats or out on the parkway whatever what is your goal for the attendee have the best time of their lives to be able to release from all the stress and strain of usual life you know their day-to-day -day grind and give them a place to escape and really 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 have fun do you think that's why people go to shows I absolutely do escape yes that's why I did when I was a fan or still am a fan and uh, yeah that's what it's all about escape connecting listening live to a song that really got you out of a bad place mm -hmm. you know really could tell you and relate to you when you were going through a breakup or a tough time with your parents or whatever the situation is that's really what it is it's that connection that means the most what's the downside of this job um environmental challenges are tough um i'm in a human business you know it's not widgets I don't know if there's a downside. It's a challenging time. I don't think there's anything downside. Challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th yeah, I don't think I, there's no downside. There's no downside. And what's the best part of it? Um, watching people have a good time. And, you know, it sounds kind of stock, but it's true. I, I never, ever not really smile to myself when I see people enjoy Cher, enjoy Madonna, <laughs> Barbra Streisand. Jay-Z, Travis Scott, Lil Uzi, it, it really, you know, the Foo Fighters, it really doesn't matter the genre. It's amazing to me. Everybody feels the same way, no matter who the artists are. It, doesn't, it really doesn't matter. They, they're equally excited from 75 to 5. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen at a show? Oh, <laughs> this isn't the time to talk about that. <laughs> there may be never. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's another uncut version, <laughs> director's cut we can do. How am I supposed to, babies born? Has that ever happened? Well, people trying to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe some conceiving going on. Yes, at, at yes. Trying concerts. very vigorously at yeah. times, yes. Uh, if you didn't do this, what would you do, do you think? I was made to do this. Oh, you were made in America. Damn right. Is it easy being married to you? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Ask my last two wives. <laughs> um, uh, this is the last thing. How many people come to you every day and ask for free tickets? <laughs> <laughs> and how do you handle that? Uh, <laughs> um, 
Turn it over to Carrie. Yes, that's, <laughs> yeah, let me, let me look into call the camera. Call Carrie. Let me, let me look into the camera. Okay. Carrie, call Carrie. <laughs> Don't text me. Don't call me. Uh, call Carrie. Who's the biggest jerk you ever met in the music business? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's never going to answer that. I can't answer He's that. He's never going to answer wait, that. Wait for the, wait for the book. <laughs> Is there a book? There will be. Oh, there should be a book on your life. There will be. There will be. But, and a film. But I have to wait until I'm sure I'm quitting my job before I actually write it or do a <laughs> That's film. For sure. Yes. Like I said, if I write a book, you'll have to. We'll have to pass out the books at my funeral. <laughs> Pretty much, more you, or less. More I don't or less. Want my daughters to know about all this stuff. <laughs> exactly. That went on and on. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, there wasn't a lot of social media during our growing years, so to speak. Yeah. 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 You like your life. I, I do. I do. I really do. And I love Philadelphia. And I love my new position overseeing New York and I'm very very blessed yes I, yeah, I like my huge. life yeah yeah I like my life because I get to do this I get to have friends like you Mike and you Mike <laughs> and that means a lot to me um, it really does um, it, it's great to have beautiful people in my life and it's great to have beautiful music yeah do you consider yourself a cool I see, I see I think you're one of the coolest people in Philadelphia I'm only as cool as my kids tell me that I am <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. I appreciate it. Thank you. Before I leave you after the break, you'll meet a couple. Well, they're in love with Michael Jackson. Well, before we close, I want you to meet Ryan and Vernay. They have the best Michael Jackson collection in the world. In other words, you can't beat it. I mean, everything is really special to us. It's not a shrine to Michael Jackson. This is the real Michael that I wanted. <laughs> but more like a museum inside Ryan and Vernay's Winslow Township home. It's truly a labor of love. From floor to ceiling, every inch of space gone. And it's still not enough room. We still have stuff under here, stuff in the attic, stuff hiding behind that curtain. During the pandemic, they managed to turn their garage into a gallery of sorts filled with dolls, pins, and you name it. Over here. There's no way to argue. Ryan and Vernay are Michael Jackson's biggest fans. And when you walk in this room, it is so overwhelming to people because it just looks like this massive collection. But to me, these are, each and every one of these things are a memory for me. These are some of the books that I used to get at school. Ryan collected albums, cereal boxes, and posters long before he met Vernay. We wanted just to have a total spectrum of his career from the time he was a child to his adult age. He's a fan of the Jackson 5. These two dolls I had made. And she's more of Michael's solo career. That level of expertise and magic that he brought, there's no other artist that gave that sense of feeling. You might have liked another artist, but it was something different. The excitement kept through Michael's good times and bad, including his 2005 criminal trial. They made it very clear when Michael comes in the courtroom, if you act like a fan, it's like screaming, oh my God, you're out. This all might seem crazy. Oh, I've heard it my whole life. <laughs> you know, you know. Just this year, Ryan and Vernay were voted on having the best Michael Jackson collection in the world. The whole purpose was to bring people together, all kinds of people. And the fact that I feel like I can keep that legacy going, you know, just here at, at my little old house is so important to me to do that for him. Well, that's it for this edition of The Jarek Report. You can always check out our stories 24 hours a day at our website, fox29.com. And if you have a story idea for me, probably the best place to get me is on Twitter. My handle is MikeFox29. And of course, I'll see you next time on Good Day Philadelphia. <laughs>